the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship to all of you. Great to have you, everyone, here in the sanctuary and those of you online as well. Um, our, part of our music today will be led by some of our young people who went on a mission trip. Uh, and so I'll let, it, uh, let them lead us in those first songs. So I'm going to give you a little warning ahead of time. You're going to be getting up and dancing a little bit. Get on your feet. Um, I encourage you to follow along with the actions that the youth do. We have a third of our group here. This is kind of just a chance to share some music. We're going to do an official like return mission trip worship in September. So uh, we hope that we can share a little bit of light and love from our trip uh, to you this morning. So stand up, please. We're going to sing Peace Like a River and then Shine Jesus Shine to open our worship this morning. The amazing grace of the Master Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
Let us confess our sins to God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. God of compassion, we confess that we have failed to bear witness to your desire to draw all people to yourself. In our hearts, we have thought ill of those who differ from us, and our love of others has not always been genuine. We are caught up in the cares of this world. We have neglected opportunities to welcome the stranger, to feed the hungry, and to mend broken relationships. Forgive our sins, merciful God, so that our hearts may burn with love for you and for those in need, and that our lives may witness to your never-failing love for your whole creation. Amen. Brothers and sisters, buried with Christ by baptism into his death, your sins are forgiven. The death Christ died, he died once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. And so you also, by the power of the Holy Spirit, are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Again, welcome to everyone, both here in the sanctuary and online. It's great to have you with us today. Um, this is an opportunity uh, for you to um, write prayer requests. If you've got requests that you'd like us to pray later in the service following the sermon, please fill out um, one of the uh, note cards, and we'll collect those following the sermon and then pray those um, this morning. And then um, this is also a chance uh, for you to say good morning to those around you. So I invite you to take a minute and say good morning to those who are seated near you. Now I'd like to invite the children forward for today's children's sermon. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Yes, all right. Well, today I brought some things that I was, that we use to help measure things. So first thing is, is this. Does anybody know what this is? It's a measuring cup, isn't it? What do we measure when we, when we use this? Milk. Sometimes you put milk in there. Water, sugar, right? Usually when we're cooking, right, we use this to measure how much. Uh-huh, we put in juice, so all kinds of things to help us measure when we're cooking. Um, how about, whoops, how about this? What do we use this for? A measuring tape, yeah. It's like, it's like almost like this long. Yes, to measure how long things are or how tall things are. Do any of you at home, do your mom or dad measure you to see how tall you are? Yeah, right, so we can use it to yeah, measure how tall you are. Yeah, you're right, exactly, uh-huh. And yes, tells you what time it is and how long things take, yep. You know, probably we have some people here who are going to be looking at their watch during my sermon just to see how long it is. That's Okay, so there are going to be people using it this morning, yeah. 
but really what I was thinking about was what um, the most important thing to measure is love and God's love for us. Yeah, right. What can we use to measure God's love? Well, I want you to look up there, way up high on that wall. What do you see way up there by that blue and yellow window? What's a, in? A cross. A cross, yes. And God tells us that that's what we use to measure how much God loves us. Because God loves us so much that he came and he came and he's a baby and then he was a boy and then he was a man and then he died on a cross for us so could we could live with him forever. Yeah. That's how much yeah, God he's, loves he's, us. He's up there. Uh-huh. Jesus is up there and Jesus yeah. is here too. Yeah, he can be everywhere. He, he died. He died and then he's alive again, right? He died. He did die on the cross, and yeah, that's how much he loves us. Did he have long hair when he, when he came probably. He probably did. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's all pray. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us so much that you died on a cross for us so that we could be with you forever and ever. Help us to love you and one another. Thank you for your love. We love you too. And all God's children said, Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. You can go back now. A reading from Hebrews chapters 13, chapter 13. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for a gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel for today is taken from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Everyone who goes through me will be cared for. They will go in and out and find pasture. The thief, he only comes to steal and to kill and destroy. But I have come 
that they may have life and have it abundantly. Word of God, word of life. Please be seated. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And the life that Jesus comes to bring is not a lot of things. In fact, he says in another place, a person's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Instead, the abundance that Jesus is talking about here is the abundance of his love. He comes that he may fill our lives with his love. Not just any love, but his love. And his love is a self-giving, self-sacrificing love. It's a love that does the best for the other no matter what the cost to oneself, which is precisely what Jesus did on the cross. This kind of love is not a feeling. It's a decision to do what's best for the other. And so Jesus comes into our lives to fill our lives with his love. And so an abundant life equals abundant love. I've been thinking about that quite a bit in these last two months since the Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade. And what I've noticed is that that decision is going to move the decision-making from the Supreme Court to state legislators. It'll be state senators and representatives largely who will be making laws about whether uh, laws should be more restrictive or less restrictive. And that means that we're going to hear a lot more about it in these coming months this fall. We're going to hear it in political campaigns. We will have to make decisions about who we're going to vote for. And we'll hear more about it next winter and next spring as legislatures meet to decide on what laws will or will not be passed. And what I've noticed is that so much of the conversation, so much of the energy, so much of the passion around this is around lawmaking. And laws are important, they matter, but they're not most important, and they don't matter most of all. What distresses me and saddens me is that so much of the conversation, so much of the energy is negative, the rhetoric is harsh and mean-spirited often, the proposals that are getting made in some places seem punitive. There seems to be so little love involved in this decision-making process, which saddens me incredibly, because it seems to me that as children of God, our task is to love in every circumstance, including this one. Now, before I go any further, let me make two caveats. The first is that every leadership, I'm not speaking for the staff, I'm certainly not speaking for God. The Lord did not send me a little text this week to tell me exactly what to say, okay? I am a child of God struggling to discern what it means to love God and love others in this often difficult and contentious arena. So please hear to discern where the Holy Spirit is leading. And the second caveat is this, and it's to state the obvious. I never have been and I never will be pregnant. I never have delivered and I never will, okay? I have only been a coach three times. And after having seen Cynthia go through labor three times, I'm fine with that, okay? <laughs> they don't call it labor for nothing, okay? I'm fine with my shirt and my whistle. But what that also means is that I have real limits on what I understand. I don't understand this from the inside, only from the outside. It's never happened to my body. And so I recognize my limits, the things I will never understand about this. So with that, um, let me take you back to 1991 
And in 1991, our church body, the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, adopted a social statement on abortion 30 years ago. And it began with the preposition that God is the God of life, that God the Father is the creator of life, God the Son is the Lord of life because he rose from the dead, the Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. And then from that came uh, this assertion, the strong Christian presumption is to preserve and protect life. Abortion ought to be an option only of last resort. Therefore, as a church, we seek to reduce the need to turn to abortion as the answer to unintended pregnancies. Now, a word about these social statements. We have a number of them. You can find them on the ELCA website. These are not binding documents on anybody's conscience, on anybody's faith or life. They're teaching documents intended to give us instruction and guidance when facing ethical decisions. So hear it in that way, as something to help us ponder and reflect and discern the will of God. And so because the presumption is to preserve and protect life, then my question is, how do we do that? How do we create an environment in which an abortion really is the last option after everything else has been thought through and found to be wanting? How do we create an environment in which people can do the most loving thing? And here I think how we love each other is critical because I do know this, that the more I am loved, the easier it is for me to love. The more love I have been given, the more love I can give away. The more deeply I know that I am loved and accepted as I am, the more deeply I can love and accept you as you are. And so loving one another is crucial as we sort through this ethical um, situation. So another way to put the question, I think, is what is the most loving thing to do? in this particular situation, at this particular moment, with these particular people? I think that's always the ethical question for us as Christians. What is the most loving thing to do here and now in this situation? And so, as we think about that, I believe that the most loving thing to do nearly always is to bring a child into the world. But that's much easier said than done. There are obstacles to making that happen. One obstacle is prenatal care. It's one thing to go through a pregnancy knowing that you're going to get top flight medical care no matter what happens. It's another thing when you don't know whether that's true, whether you feel like you may be putting your health or even your life at risk to go through with a pregnancy. And so do we love one another deep enough so that every woman in America is guaranteed, does our love go that far? But that's only the beginning. Poverty is another obstacle to bringing children into the world. We know that most of the abortions that happen in America are with mothers who already have children. And the reason that they don't bring a child goes hungry or homeless, that they wind up in a shelter or on the street, that they won't be able to feed and clothe and educate their kids. And so is our love deep enough to make sure that poverty is not the reason that someone feels like they need to decide not to bring a child into the world? And then I think of young women in high school or college who don't want to be pregnant but find that they are. And we probably need to have the conversation some other time about how not to be in that situation in the first place and not just with girls but with boys and we do that in confirmation. But once a girl is pregnant, that conversation doesn't matter. It's what do we do now? And so, what if, what if that young woman wants to bring a child to term, 
and wants to keep that child and raise it as her own, but is afraid if she does, she won't be supportive, she'll be shamed, she won't have the resources not only to raise her child, but to get an education and be able to stand someday on her own two feet. And what if she decides, you know, I want to carry that child to term, but I want to, to give it to some loving parents to adopt this child because I'm not ready to be a parent. Are we ready to help that girl walk through that decision-making process, choose the adoptive parents, work through the grief of letting go? Do we love enough to surround these young women with the love and the care that they need, especially at that time in their lives. Now, everything I've said so far assumes a healthy child, a healthy mother, a healthy pregnancy, but we all know that's not always the case. We live in a broken, fallen world. And so there are times when an abortion is the best of a bad set of options, where there really is no good, easy choice. There are situations in which a woman's life is genuinely on the line. An entopic pregnancy, when the child begins to grow in one of the fallopian tubes, that can be fatal if it is not addressed. And there are other uh, medical conditions that are extremely life-threatening. And it may be in that situation that a woman decides, tragically, sadly, that she needs to end the pregnancy. And there, then there are those awful situations of rape and incest. And a girl or a woman may decide to bring that child to term, but she may not. She may not because it will be just too much to bear she may be able to do it physically, but mentally and emotionally. What if it casts her into a deep depression and she becomes suicidal? Because she's not only dealing with the trauma of the sexual assault, but also all that comes with bringing a child into the world. Maybe she will, and maybe she won't. And then there are those tragic, heartbreaking situations where there are fetal abnormalities, as they say, where the child dies in the womb or would die shortly thereafter. And there are families that do bring those children to term and care for them for as long as they live their short little lives, but there are others who do not. So there are those situations, as tragic, as heartbreaking, as gut-wrenching as it is, where ending a pregnancy may be the best thing to do. No one should do that quickly or lightly, but sometimes, sometimes it has to be done. And we need to make room in our laws for these exceptional, extraordinary, difficult situations because these are so hard. There is often more ambiguity than clarity. There is often more questions than answers. And we need to surround one another with as much love as we can, especially in these situations. My plea this morning is simply for more love. I'm pretty sure we'll have lots of conversation and energy and passion around law. I hope we have the same around love. I hope we can love one another even when we disagree. That we can love one another even when we don't understand why someone's made the choice they have. I hope we can love even when we don't know the backstory that led to this moment. I hope we can love when there are more questions than answers and more ambiguity than clarity. 
I hope we can love moms and dads and families and villages that surround them so that there's the best chance possible to do the most loving thing in a particular situation. Love one another. I do know that. And I do know that Jesus comes into our homes and into our hearts. He comes into our lives and into our world so that all of us, and I do mean all of us, can have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Our song of the day is, Although I Speak, you're invited to stand as you are able. Please join your minds and hearts as we confess our holy faith. We believe in you, O God, who spoke all life into being, author of heaven and earth, architect of time, quilter of the cosmos. You shape our bodies from the dust of the ground, and by your breath we are given life. We believe in you, O God, who became incarnate in Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh, truly divine and truly human. You lived among us to reveal your justice, died among us to break the bonds of sin and death, to bring abundant life. We believe in you, O God, who transforms us by the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> draws us into community, moves us to action, and inspires us to hope against hope. You breathe new life into a fallen world and equip us to proclaim the good news of resurrecting love. All thanks and praise to you, O God, our beginning and our end. Amen. Please be seated. Now I invite the ushers to pass our offering plates. You can put your offering there if you've uh, brought it as an envelope or a check. And also put your prayer cards in there as well, and we will gather those up and pray them after our offertory. So during offertory this morning, as we sing My Lighthouse, I invite you to think about these words. Um, in my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. And I won't fear what tomorrow brings. With each morning, I'll rise and sing. So as we sing My Lighthouse, uh, you're invited to do the actions with us, but also think about the great words of this song.
Thank you. Now I invite you to center yourself, to still your mind and heart, focus on the presence of the Holy Spirit as we lift up to the Lord our prayers. Gracious God, we pray for the city of Delano to understand the importance of the upcoming levy and lead us to vote on November 8th. We pray for staff, teachers, parents, and especially students. We pray for my sister Christine. She was recently diagnosed with lung cancer. We ask that you give her the strength and courage that she needs to fight this. Father God, I trust that you have a plan for my life. I just can't see it. Please help each of us discern your will and respond in ways that please you. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for teachers and all school staff this upcoming school year. May they have the support and love from all around them for a successful school year in ever-changing and challenging times. We pray, Lord, that you grant us patience as we love Grant us kindness as we love. Grant us compassion as we love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you be with those who struggle with mental health issues. Give them people in their lives so they don't feel alone. Open our hearts and eyes to the opportunity to walk in accompaniment with those who struggle with their mental health. Let them feel your loving presence wrapped around them. And we lift up to you, Lord, uh, Uncle Charlie, in his fight against cancer. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we uh, give you thanks this day uh, for our fathers Lutheran in Rockford as they celebrate their 50th anniversary. We give you thanks for the blessings in the past, for all that you're doing in the present, and for your promise to be with them in the future. Bless them so that they can be a blessing to many others. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we rejoice this day with the family of Amelia Olson as she is baptized later this morning. As you name her and claim her as your own, may she always know how deeply and how dearly she is loved as one of your beloved children. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our strategic planning process this year and ask the grace to discern your will for us in all that is ahead. And we thank you for your generosity, for giving us blessing upon blessing and gift upon gift. And help us to be generous with all that you've given us, with our time and our talent and our treasure, so that others may come to know your unbounded grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all who are ill in any way, in body or mind or spirit, not only of our Light of Christ community, but for all those whom we know and love. And we now lift them up to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray your blessing on all the children and youth of the world and especially for our own children and youth, that they come to know deep within that they are all beloved children of God. And we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and for peace in that war-torn land. Shelter and protect them in the midst of war. Give them hope in the face of despair. Use us to respond to every need and turn the hearts of those who are set on war. Guide the leaders of all the nations to find a just and peaceable resolution and grant peace not only in Ukraine, but among all people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Lord, we lift up to you those things which weigh most heavily upon our own minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On the first Easter evening, Jesus appeared to his disciples and gave them the peace that passes all understanding. He invites us to do the same, to share that same Easter peace with one another. So the peace of the Lord be with you. Please share that peace with one another.
Our service continues with the communion liturgies. You find it on page 11 or on the screen. Would you please stand as you're able? Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the seas, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us, on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your Spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to the table because you are a beloved child of God. You may be seated as we prepare for communion.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. We have been fed by our Lord to be his living, loving body in the world, and so I invite you to uh, take note of the ways we're doing that as a community of faith. Uh, several things I want to highlight. Um, outdoor worship next week, 9 o'clock. It'll be our last outdoor worship for this summer, so weather permitting, we'll be out um, on the lawn uh, next Sunday. And so don't forget your chairs. Um, and then um, our columbarium is taking shape. Um, the niches and face plates are in. Uh, the stonework will be done probably within about three or four weeks. And then, uh, and at the same time, we'll begin with the uh, landscaping. If you would like to donate something for the landscaping, a tree, a bench, a bush, or part of it, you're more than welcome to do that. And we're having ways to note that, to uh, memorialize how you've done that. There's a table in the back. A couple of people in the Columbarium Committee will be there to give you more information. So if you're feeling led, um, to do that, please talk to them, and they can tell you what things are going to be planted and so forth if you'd like to be a part of that uh, process. And then registration for Youth and Family Ministries is open. Um, you can find it on the website. The flyers with the QR codes are around the building, so Sunday School, Confirmation, Youth Group, all those sorts of things, Club 5-6, um, all those things spark our, um, uh, just around the corner. So please take note of that. We're going to start up here very soon. And then um, on Rally Sunday, September 11th, um, 9 o'clock, service will be indoors. Um, we are going to bless the backpacks. So kids, bring your backpacks. And we're also going to distribute uh, Bibles to third graders. Is that right? Third graders will receive their study Bibles. And, uh, and then there'll be a carnival outside following the service for kids and for kids at heart of any age as well. And seventh grade Bibles too. Okay, all right. It's a good thing I have a good staff that keeps me <clears throat> updated on what we're doing. So thank you. All right. With that, I invite you to stand for our sending liturgy. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of the Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we got to end with a little gospel light. So you got to get your lights out. And on second verse, are we going to hide it under a bushel? No. And we got to say no as loud as we can. So you, this is your chance to be loud in church. And then um, anytime we say hey, 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 we got to do a little twist. Hey, 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 hey. And uh, won't let Satan it out. Okay? So. God will lead us in. Okay. Well, this is the light of mine.
Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Oh, we should do it again. Around the neighborhood. All around the neighborhood. Go run around. We're gonna let it shine. Hey.